Hello. In this video, I'd like to compare two poems by William Blake. The poems share the same name, The Chimney Sweeper. One is from his Songs of Innocence and another is from his Songs of Experience in his book, The Songs of Innocence and Experience. The reason why I like to compare these two poems is because they demonstrate a shift from his Songs of Innocence to his Songs of Experience in that the version of the Chimney Sweeper in his Songs of Innocence contains a counterfactual redemptive aspect that the poem when it reappears in the Songs of Experience does not contain. So I'd like to read both poems with my notes and try and highlight this aspect, this important shift in Blake's poetry for the viewer. When my mother died I was very young and my father sold me while yet my tongue could scarcely cry weep, 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 weep. So your chimney and I sweep in my soot I sleep. There's little Tom Das who cried when his head that curled like a lamb's back was shaved, so I said, Hush, Tom, never mind it, for when your head's bare, you know that the soot cannot spoil your white hair. And so he was quiet, and that very night, as Tom was a-sleeping, he had such a sight, that thousands of sweepers, Dick, Joe, Ned, and Jack, were all of them locked up in coffins of black. And by came an angel who had a bright key, and he opened the coffin and set them all free. Then down a green plain, leaping, laughing, they run, and wash in a river and shine in the sun. Then naked and white, or their bags left behind, they rise upon clouds and sport in the wind. And the angel told Tom if he'd been a good boy, he'd have God for his father and never want joy. And so Tom awoke and we rose in the dark and got with our bags and our brushes to work. Though the morning was cold, Tom was happy and warm. So if all do their duty, they need not fear harm. So a few points about this poem. One, the rhyme scheme, A, A, B, B, two couplets. Uh, things you notice. The child's white hair. White indicating the divine nature of the child that can't be harmed. Um, and we notice in the fourth and fifth stanzas, there's kind of a dream interlude here. Um, and in these stanzas, the one that starts with and by came an angel um, through down to he'd have God for his father. In this dream inter interlude, this is where the counterfactuality comes in and is inserted. And that overcomes the horrors of the reality, of the realism, of the, the, the description of the actual situation of the uh, child chimney sweepers. So this is a crucial point. These, uh, these are uh, uh, the fourth and fifth stanzas. And that enables the final stanza to have this, uh, this aspect where... Um, you know, the rose in the dark, uh, Tom, you know, even though you can imagine uh, winter in England, rising in the dark, naked, head shaved, going to walk, work, basically being forced up a, a you know, a seven inch by seven inch chimney um, uh, to basically stay in, the, in a chimney all morning, you know, covered in dust and covered in ash, freezing, and the idea that Tom was happy and warm. Uh, so th there's there's kind of an idea that the worst can't harm the better, that 
that that that that uh, despite all the horrors of reality, there is some sort of uh, yeah counterfactual transcendental redemption going on here, um, and this is this this is typical of 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 Blake's songs of innocence. However, if we move and and look at the version of the poem repeated um, or re, re, uh, re-articulated or re, redeveloped in uh, the songs of experience, we, we see um, this aspect utterly missing. So let me read this. The Chimney Sweeper. A little black thing among the snow, crying, weep, weep, in notes of woe. Where are thy father and mother, say? They are both gone up to the church to pray. Because I was happy upon the hearth and smiled along the winter snow, they clothed me in the clothes of death and taught me to sing the notes of woe. And because I am happy and dance and sing, they think they have done me no injury and are gone to praise God and his priest and king, who make up a heaven of our misery. So, there you have it. Second stanza, Notes of Spite. Um, you know, and as- in third stanza we see aspects of resilience that, well, the child's still happy, but it doesn't mean that there has been uh, untold harm done, and that there is nothing that redeems that harm, um, and there is co- resentment coming out. There is anti sort of establishment sentiments coming out um, against this established conventional religiosity here and the hypocrisy of it. So th- there is a very different tone. Um, there, there is kind of yeah that. So I think I think these two poems uh, need to be read together to see the these two aspects. Read them, uh, see what you think, um, and I'll be interested to know if 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 that's just my take or if uh, other people also see this this aspect this this. Uh, uh, lacking of of, uh, uh, counterfactual redemption in the second version of The Chimney Sweeper. Thank you.